Hello and welcome to DAS Nostalgia. I'm Anatoly and I invite you to the wonderful world of MS-DAS gaming. Well, a little while ago I picked up this machine, literally off the side of a street. It's a Dell Optiplex a GX100, so it's a little office machine that's easy to open and modify and for a while I was working on restoring it for a video that, that was sort of a trash into treasure kind of deal. At one point its hard drive just went and I've decided to replace it with a compact flash card. I heard it was easy, I've never done it before and um, I was working on a video on how to do it and in the middle of working on it uh, this machine's power supply messed up just long enough to fry it. So, big bummer, I guess, but that very same day on eBay, a different machine popped up, very similar to this, without a hard drive, and I didn't need one, so I decided to buy it. This is a Dell Optiplex GX1. It's a bit heavier and a bit older, but it's actually better for a retro PC enthusiast, and later you'll see why. So I've decided to upgrade it a little bit and make a video about it, uh, mainly to show how easy it is, because believe it or not, I am not a very technical person. I don't know much about hardware. I'm a DOS enthusiast, I deal with software a lot, but not so much with hardware. So I decided to show how easy it is to rescue one of those old machines and turn it into something that's easy to use today. So let's work on it together. Let's get to it. Looks like this machine has an intrusion alert when someone opens it up. Pretty funny. Time and date not set, most likely a dead battery. Let's get into the BIOS. Okay, so the battery is definitely super dead, just look at that clock go. No drives obviously, but everything else seems to be in order. Well, time to get to work. Let's open this baby up. What I really like about these machines is how easy they are to open. Just hold down two buttons on the sides and the lid slides right off. Here's that classic vertical PDM2 processor with a heatsink. No hard drive as described. Let's pop out this expansion unit which already has some cards in it. Another cool design I like, just lift a small lever and the whole thing comes out. Makes for a very easy installation. Let's see what was in there already. This is a Creative Vibra sound card. Currently I don't have a use for it because I had a different card in mind for this machine. And this looks like a Creative Modem Blaster. Cool, never had one before. We're going to be using this Monoprice ID to Compact Flash CF adapter that I bought on Amazon for $9. I didn't know anything about it except for that I did a search for it and was surprised to find one so cheap. So we're going to be installing that along with the Sound Blaster Live Value PCI card into this machine. What I really like about this computer being of that specific time is that it has both PCI and ISA or ISA slots, making this a very good machine for any retro nerd. Unfortunately, it looks like despite having four ports, only three devices can be installed at the same time, as one place is shared by one PCI and one ISA slot. But right now that's more than enough. I'd also like to thank a fellow YouTuber who has sent me this sound card a long time ago for another retro PC restoration project. I'm very grateful and the only reason I don't mention their name right now is I don't want them to get bombarded with requests asking for free sound cards. Well. That was easy. Now, we already have an IDE cable, the same as the original hard drive was using, but the adapter only accepts 3.5 inch floppy drive power cable. And as I don't have any spare ones, I'm gonna use this Molex to floppy power converter cable that I got for $1.59. Also, both the floppy drive and the CD-ROM will have to come out so I can get to the battery. Alright, this is a battery. Luckily it's not leaking or anything, so I can just easily replace it with another battery I bought at the local pharmacy. Another interesting thing in this machine is that it has an onboard sound chip by Crystal. I've heard good things about it and its DOS compatibility, but for the time I'm gonna stick with my Sound Blaster Live. Changing the battery is easy as that. 
and now it's time to put everything back together. Let's connect the CD audio to the sound card and the power and IDE connector to the compact flash adapter. Everything slots back together nicely and we're pretty much ready to go. For this machine I bought this Transcend compact flash card only because it showed up in suggestions as what other customers were buying together with the adapter. I've heard negative things about these cards since then, but in my personal experience this card seems to be working just fine at the moment. Another thing I learned by looking at the footage is not to use a passive VGA splitter, as it messed up the colors and bias and would no doubt mess up more. From now on we're gonna be using this one. So let's plug in all the cables and get this thing going. I'm gonna start it up without the card first to check if there are any problems. Well, the clock is still going super fast, but I think that's fine. Let's disable the chassis intrusion alert and also disable the onboard sound as I don't intend to use it. Now, using a new machine, I'm gonna format the CF card and not gonna bother with creating multiple partitions because, after all, this is going to be a Windows 98 machine primarily and can handle large partitions and files. Another good side effect of using a Dell machine is that all the drivers are still available to download in one place. I'm gonna do just that. And before we put Windows on it, I thought let's do something interesting, not to mention quick, and install DOS 7 on it. DOS 7 never got an official standalone release, but some enthusiasts managed to rip it out of Windows 98 and create their own installer for it. It's easy to find and download. Then I'm gonna burn the CD image I just downloaded onto a CDR, and we're almost ready to go. Let's pop in our freshly formatted CF card and get into BIOS. The clock is working fine, and it looks like the card is successfully getting recognized as a hard drive. Now let's change the boot sequence to install DOS 7 from a CD. The installation is very quick and easy and even has a bunch of optional tools you can install such as an orthodox bi-panel file manager Volkov Commander, something I encourage everyone to use on a vintage machine. I love me some bi-panel file managers. In fact, I'm gonna use a modern one called Total Commander to copy all the DOS files I have prepared beforehand onto our new DOS 7 card. And now it's time to load up the Sound Blaster Live DOS drivers and check out some games. A cool little thing about Sound Blaster Live is that it has simple MT32 emulation, although it only works for games that use the default instrument bank and don't upload their own patches. But it works great for something like Loom. Okay, now it's time to move on to Windows. Unfortunately, the way I handled things, I have to reformat the DOS 7 partition before I can install Windows. Oh well. And now the fastest Windows 98 install of my life. Seriously, it might not be instant, but it's very fast. Now let's copy all these drivers I've downloaded and install them.
then I'm gonna copy over a bunch of software and of course games. On a vintage Windows machine, I always prefer to have a couple of bi-panel file managers and a CD-ROM drive emulator. Getting closer. And now let's check out a couple of DOS games again. And since this is a Windows machine, let's see some Windows games as well. Like the classic Ski Free. Or how about Sentinel Returns, a remake of an 80s 3D game with updated visuals and music by the master of horror himself, John Carpenter. I'd say everything is working just fine. Well, as you could see, this was fairly easy. I didn't spend much time on it and it didn't require a lot of money. Uh, I'm very happy with the result and I think in the future, if any of my other hard drives go in any of my vintage machines, I will do the same. And I will certainly would like to encourage you to do the same. And as for this machine, you'll be seeing a lot more of it in future videos. Thank you for watching, and keep playing DOS games! Thank you very much for watching this video, and a special thanks goes out to all these awesome DOS enthusiasts who make these videos possible by supporting DOS Nostalgia on Patreon. Check out my other videos, subscribe to the channel for more DOS Nostalgia, and hopefully I'll see you soon.